I got a question for you. The question is this, what is the difference between knowledge, understanding, and wisdom? Three words. Some people think they're synonymous, they mean the same thing, but they don't. What is the difference? Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Well, let's stop and think about this. Do you remember when you were a little kid? I remember um, I had very little knowledge. Fortunately, I had good parents and I had older siblings who would uh, instruct me. And, um, okay, so they would teach me things. For example, they would say, that is a dog. I didn't know. If no one told me that was a dog, it could be anything. Okay, it's a dog. I've got knowledge. And they said, you know, you don't just walk up and pet a dog. Because, you know, dogs, they seem to, particularly puppies, cute, cuddly, you want to just walk up and hug them. Do not do that to a cat. You know, it's a cat. looks like the little cat that I got in my bedroom. It's a stuffed animal. You know, you, you hug it. That's a living animal. You don't do that. So now I've got knowledge, and uh, it's a dog. And now I've got understanding. You don't walk up and pet every dog because they could bite your fingers. They could nip at you. They could growl and snarl at you and scare you. They could even bite your leg. They could maul you. They could do serious damage to you. So now I've gone from knowledge, and I've got a little bit of understanding, but it's really not full understanding until I say, well, let's try this. So you go up and pet the dog, and it bites you. You know, it nips at you, snarls at you, whatever. And you cry, and you run away, and the dog chases you, and uh, that's not a good experience. Um... I can't actually remember being bit by a dog until I was a paper boy, 19 years old. Okay, that hurt. So I had knowledge that is a dog. I understood when the dog snarls and barks that he might bite you. And now I had full understanding what they were talking about. So knowledge and understanding are not the same thing. Knowledge is what you know. Understanding is what you understand about what you know. So it's kind of application. Now. What is wisdom? Wisdom is simply taking what you know and understand and applying it. So I know that's a dog. I understand that it could bite. But if I go ahead and start petting every dog that I see, that's not a wise thing to do, is it? I'm not applying my knowledge and my understanding. So we said all of that to say this. Those of you with Asperger syndrome and autism, uh, it's a good thing to have knowledge and understanding. Obviously, you're doing that right now. That's why you're watching this presentation. That's why you're watching this video. You're gaining knowledge. You're gaining understanding. But are you going to apply what you know and understand? And by the way, that's not as easy as you think because you start to study autism and Asperger syndrome. You have different uh, opinions. People have different takes on it coming at you. and You're not sure what which one is right? What do I know? What do I understand? And sometimes it takes life experience to differentiate between the two. That's what we're talking about now. What do you expect as you get older? Well, here's something that all of us have in common. If you have Asperger syndrome, if you have autism, we all have this one single thing in common, and that is uh, we're getting older. Doesn't matter. You could be a teenager, you could be college age, you could be middle aged adult, you could be an older adult or older, older adult, kind of like me. They call us senior citizens, even if we're not citizens, we're citizens somewhere, right? So we're seniors and we're citizens, that's what they call us. And we all have this one thing in common we're getting older. But as we get more and more experience through life, we have more and more understanding. But that doesn't mean we have wisdom, right? So I could have all kinds of understanding over my nearly 70 years of life. Doesn't mean I'm going to apply it. But let's talk about some of these things. So number one, we already said, is knowing the difference between knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Number two is, here's one of the things we know, or we should know, is that few people change. So number two is few people change. Some people do, but not very many. What does that even mean? Well, let's go back again. You know, talk about kid. You're a little kid. You're on the playground. And uh, maybe you're bullied. In my case, I wasn't bullied that much. I just kind of ignored. I was left out. I stood by the side. If I could get away with it. And I just kind of observed the world go by. I was, uh, uh, I was just in my own little bubble. You know, my own little eggshell. Um, watching the world go by. And what I noticed is that, uh, yeah, these kids are mean. They would bully each other, not just me. They didn't bully me that much, pretty much ignoring me, but they would be mean to each other. And I was thinking to myself, boy, I can't wait to grow up. So I don't have to put up with this. So these people will grow up and I can live in an adult world and don't have to put up with this. Well, guess what? 
I grew up and I found that those little kids on the playground grew up too, but their behavior didn't change. Adults are little children who are taller, weigh a little bit more, their behavior is a little bit more refined. We've got rules and laws that go by and we understand that if we totally act like children, we're going to get ourselves, we're going to libel ourselves, get ourselves in trouble, maybe go to jail. So we're going to try to go by these rules, but the core person is still the same. You know that because you went to work, right? You had a job and you found that these adults who are supposed to act like grown-ups are still acting like little kids on the playground. You know, they're still bullying each other, fighting with each other, and they pick it on you because, well, uh, you seem to be a little more coherent than other people. You seem to have your act together, and that drives them crazy because they don't understand you. You're kind of like the Vulcan. You're, you're just kind of weird. You're a space alien. So how do they deal with that? How do they contend with you because you're so level-headed? Makes them feel bad. Well, they pick on you. Right, and that's that's uh, that's kind of a low ball way to say it, because they can really be mean. You wind up losing your job. They accuse you of all kinds of different things, and now you come to understand that um, all this stuff about Awareness Week for uh, people with autism, it's a good thing, but it doesn't seem to have a whole lot of impact on people. I remember being in a grocery store, and they had these signs. I think it was Awareness Month, Autism Awareness Month. And the only thing that changed that I saw were they put signs up. The behavior of people didn't change at all. The signs may as well not even been there. Maybe it made them feel a little better. I don't know. But number two is few people change. Well, what does that mean? Number three, it means we're going to have to change. The way that I say that is expectations change. So those expectations that children are going to grow up to be mature adults who behave themselves, that changes. That's got to go. So we have these should statements that we had uh, as children. People shouldn't be that way. And as we get older, we better learn that those should statements are dysfunctional because people should not behave that way. They should not be that way. But they are. They should not. Uh, we say people should behave this way, but they don't. So what good are those should statements? They don't, you know. They don't do anything at all. What we have to do is recognize reality for what reality is. And that is that people, very few people, are going to change. Therefore, we have to be the ones who change as people with autism who have Asperger's syndrome. The way that I like to summarize that is simply saying, is, is. Simple two-word sentence. And the words are the, are the same. So, you know, it's kind of hard to miss. What I'm saying is, the world is the way that it is. People are the way that they are. It is just is. You know, it is what it is. Summarize that, is, is. So it's not going to change. We have to change. So, you know, number three is we need to take those expectations of change and internalize them to the point where we understand this is the way the world is. And we're going to have to make the adjustments. We're going to have to be the adult in the room. We're going to have to be the ones who grow up and face reality for what it is, because man, is is. Number four, we need coping strategies. If we're going to change, we need to understand this is how you cope. Okay, let's go back to the very beginning. We got this dog. How are you going to cope with that? Well, if you have wisdom, you're going to stay away from the dog. That is your coping strategy until you know this is not a dog that's going to bite your hand off, right? or nip you in the heel, or whatever dogs do, jump on you. I love dogs, I just don't want to have one myself. You have one, I'm okay with that. Uh, but I'm not going to pet it until I know it's a nice dog, right? So that's a coping strategy. Now, you're saying, Ken, are you talking about avoidance? Well, you know, sometimes you need to avoid difficult situations, right? I mean, we, we apply avoidance all the time. It's not a bad thing. I mean, extreme avoidance can be challenging, can, can cause problems, but... You know, I avoid walking across a busy intersection, particularly when the light is red. I avoid doing that because I see the danger, you know. So avoidance is a good coping strategy. Understanding how people behave is a good coping strategy. If you're not capable of working in a real work situation, a coping strategy may be to go get help. I don't want to be weak. I don't want to go get help. That, that just 
that's just absence of common sense. You know, earlier this week, I went to the rheumatologist. It took me three months to get, you know, I got the appointment. They told me to come see him in three months, which happened to be this week after I waited three months. So I went in and saw the rheumatologist. I didn't see that as a weakness. I saw it as uh, being smart, a coping strategy. So for three months or longer, I had to deal with inflammation and what do they call that? Autoimmune disorder where you band, you just feel like uh, you're stiff and you're weak and everything you do hurts. And the rheumatologist poked and punched on me and asked me a lot of uh, pertinent questions. And then he said, here's a prescription. Cool, took 40 milligrams and guess what? It worked. That's a coping strategy. So if you're having challenges finding work or whatever, uh, go talk to the doctor, not the literal doctor, but find somebody who can help you find employment. And there are a lot of companies out there who are now very much aware of autism and Asperger syndrome and the needs that people have. And they're also learning that people with Asperger syndrome actually make superior workers, that you are helping them make profit, which is why people go in business, by the way, is to make money. So if you can help them make money, you're an asset instead of being a liability because they were the ones who were libeling themselves by not hiring people with Asperger syndrome. They're coming to their senses. Why not take advantage of that? You know, go find a service somewhere somehow uh, that will help you find employment. That's a coping strategy. And so that's just the beginning. By the way, talking to a therapist, a qualified therapist, think of it as being sick, go talk to a doctor. And you may not be sick. You may just have uh, some kind of a disorder. Um, you know, my, I wasn't sick when I had inflammation. It's just a disorder. So I went and talked to a qualified physician. Got to talk to somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. That's coping strategy. All right, so number one is we need to understand the difference between knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Number two, we need to understand that few people are going to change. They can have their awareness months or whatever. I'm all for that, but it's not going to have much of an impact. Number three, we need to change because we need to be proactive reactively, reactively, proactively be a better way to say it. And then number four is we need to develop coping strategies. So let's close out with a simple question. What is your coping strategy? or strategies. If you don't have any, maybe it's time just to sit down with a piece of paper, maybe on your computer, and type out, my coping, my problem is this, and my coping strategy is this. Two columns. Problem, coping. Problem, coping. Problem, coping. One in each column. See those two rectangles on the screen? Let's keep talking if you want. If not, thanks for stopping by. See you all next time.